Did you know that many coaches, when they want to teach you about effectiveness and impact in your life, they will start by telling you to think about the last day of your life. They will ask you to think about two days, date of birth and date of burial. And they ask you to transfer yourself to your date of burial and look around and see. What do you see at that funeral? Are people crying? Are people happy? What are they saying about you? And better yet, they ask you, these coaches, what do you want them to say about you? In so doing, you kind of zero in on how you can be effective in your life. And in this series, we've been discussing the things that we can be able to do that can enhance our effectiveness in life. And today, I want us to look at one more thing that can help us with that. So stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. I know you are interested in being effective in your life. I know that. In fact, I could even go ahead and tell you it is a psychological need, a need to contribute, a need to grow, because growth and contribution are going to align your effectiveness in this life that we've been given. It is, you know, like I've said in these episodes, in the past few episodes, that when you are not effective as a human being, you will know. Your spirit will communicate to you. You will know that something is off, man. Something is off. But when you are effective, it doesn't matter what you do not have. Okay, I know that is motivational in speaking. But you know what I'm saying? That it is much more valuable in life to be effective and lack some luxuries than to have luxuries and lack effectiveness. And I know people will say, but if I have the luxuries, it's easy for me to become effective because now I have the luxuries and so on. It doesn't work that way. More of luxuries will beget more of wanting of luxuries, not more of wanting of effectiveness. I kid you not. So the idea is that we need to prioritize effectiveness in our lives. How can we enhance our productivity? When I talk about productivity in life, what are you thinking about? I'm thinking about this. I'm thinking that you have been sent here to do something. You are not a freeloader. You are not here to occupy space above the earth and occupy space beneath the earth. You are here to be productive. You are here to be effective with your life. That's why you have that kind of gift. That's why you have that kind of talent. That's why you are passionate about that thing you are that I'm not. Because you're supposed to be effective with it. You're supposed to be productive with it. And how can we do this? Yesterday we said and we learned that the first thing you need to, to work on is your competence. We all work on competence. The problem that I said we have in the world today is that the competence we're working on today is uniform. We're copying and pasting competence. I can say that the competence we're getting from the education system should be foundational. It should be looked at foundational. But the problem is, we look at it as the holy grail of achievement. And yet, you have a mathematician who is holed up in things that they're not supposed to be doing. Or you have a gifted, talented artist somewhere who is locked in, trying to be competent in mathematics and in English and in physics. 
I'm saying it's okay. You do the mathematics, do the English and the physics. But if you're going to be effective, the competence you should be ironing and sharpening should be the competence that is connected to your strength and your passion. Actually, your strength, forget about the passion because you can be passionate about football and you don't have the capacity or the skill or the talent to do it. So look at your talent and look at your abilities and look at your capacity, look at your natural inner talents, look at your natural, sp- I mean, your spiritual talents, look at those things, look at your disposition. How can you be competent with that? Sharpen yourself so much. Uh, actually, it's Stephen R. Covey who says that uh, uh, the habit number six, I should say, or seven, the habit number seven of highly effective people is sharpening the soul. What is sharpening the soul? Working on your competence. Improving yourself. That's what we focused on yesterday. But today, if you're going to be effective, I don't care whether it's in sports or it's in ministry, in Christian ministry or Muslim ministry or Buddhist ministry. I don't care if it's in business or it's in governance or if it's in education or if it's in whatever area of life. You will not be enhancing your productivity and your effectiveness if number two you are not a planner so in order to enhance your productivity in order to to enhance your effectiveness in this life you've got to be number two a planner there is no effectiveness without using your life with planning you cannot do life without planning and become effective i've come to realize that planning is permanent my friends I've come to realize planning is not something that I do in January 1st or at the first of the week. Planning is something that I do daily. And every time you don't do planning daily, guess what you're doing? You're drifting. You are not being effective. To be effective means you need to lead yourself. And you lead yourself through planning. Directing yourself that I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that and that and that. And I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do this and I'm going to do that. That's what planning is all about. An effective pursuant of purpose is an incessant and consummate planner. He plans daily. She plans daily. Did you know that you can get a lowly skilled person who is a major planner and that increases their competence? Did you know that you can also get a highly skilled person who does not plan and they end up being the most incompetent person you ever saw? the most ineffective person he ever saw. You know what I'm saying here? What I'm communicating here? I'm saying at some some point in time, planning can even trump the confidence, I mean the, the competence that you're working on. It can trump the academic papers that you have. If you are a consummate planner, you are much more effective than a guy who has a PhD and he's not a planner. I kid you not. Uh, You know, planning is about strategy. Life of effectiveness is connected directly to the hip on effectiveness and strategy it is connected on strategy you plan you strategize in order to become effective in our lives we've got to be planners in other words planning is so key that it trumps many academic qualifications many other competencies and planning is also a skill that is learnable that is the most beautiful thing about it is a skill it is not a feeling it is not a gift it is not a talent it is available to all of us there are some guys who are of course naturally predisposed to plan those guys who are high c's detailed and those ones who are dominant high d's maybe they don't plan a lot but it is a learnable skill we can all learn to plan it is not something that you can fail to do. It's something that you can learn to do and becomes part and parcel of you. So planning is so, so incredibly important if you and I are going to be effective in our lives. And the seeds of planning are with us all at birth. They come in the form of desires. They come in form of wishes. They come in form of dreams. Planners, they are those who take the step to seriously consider bringing the object of their desires the object of their wishes, the object of your dreams into fruition. And inherently, listen, inherently, you can plan towards a particular objective. As in, in your mind, you just work it out. It is all always going to be with us. 
we are inherently planners all of us any time any human being thinks about the future that's a seed of planning you think about tomorrow you want to go and visit your auntie that's a seed of planning right there this means that by the time you are planning you already know either purpose or vision you already know the reason as to why you are planning purpose or the vision of it and therefore in your plan you mind map the full extent of the purpose and the vision of the things that you want to do this phase is always laborious because it is it is taxing it is also by the way very glorious because when every tick has been done on all the different permutations of the desires and the plans and the futures and the resources and the people you can sit back and you can think hey this thing is like halfway done that's how glorious planning is that's how it ushers you into the realm of effectiveness the guys who you see being effective you marvel at the things that they do probably they are not necessarily geniuses they are simply consummate planners and they have learned to look at something and you know work on it and work on it like uh, this guy told us uh, Abraham Lincoln I've quoted this guy many times on that particular quote he said if I'm given 6 hours to chop down a tree I'll probably use 4 hours to sharpen my axe that's what planning does that by the time you start taking action on the plans that you have and i know there have been very many quotes on planning this are an army general who say that planning is indispensable but during the war it is the most useless thing what is he saying it say he's saying that planning prepares you for any eventualities in the war it doesn't mean that when the war starts everything will fall in place the same way you envision them in the plan but that's how planning is important because it is intimate it speaks to your current need as well as the blueprints in activating your plan it is that critical if you're going to be effective me and you we are going we are going to be people who are consummate planners so being effective is partly a matter of competence as well as a matter of planning more so a matter of planning but don't forget the competence look at these two aspects of effectiveness and productivity what cannot fail to see that they do not discriminate anyone competence doesn't discriminate anyone planning doesn't discriminate anyone virtually anybody anywhere can if be effective and productive if they so wish to be there is no one who was born special that they are the only ones who can be effective and productive all of us as long as we can lean into our competence as which you talked about yesterday and as long as today you can plan out your desires your wishes your dreams your vision and your purpose you are a candidate of being someone who is effective in their life so the question to ask today is this are you being productive where you are and with what you have in your dreams desires wishes purpose and vision tomorrow we go deeper into this even as we're talking about living a life of effectiveness and enhancing it until then bye bye thank you for listening to life signatures radio if you enjoyed today's show subscribe to life signatures radio on itunes stitcher or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com life signatures radio fresh clean and inspiring